enterprising, and creative. We are bold, daring, and full of faith. We are Daughters of Destiny. We give you all the glory. Abba, Father, we worship you.
Jesus, everything under creation, you will cooperate with us today in the name of Jesus. We speak the blood of Jesus. The blood that speaks for that is the blood of Abel. We speak the blood today. We speak the blood of Jesus. Let the blood speak for us today. We speak the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus that cannot be insulted. We speak the blood of Jesus over all that we do, over the environment, over the atmosphere. The blood of Jesus. Speak for us today. Speak for us today. Speak healing. Speak deliverance. today we thank you because we know great and mighty things that the lord is set to do for us today in the name of jesus we receive it O lord today and let our glory honor adoration be unto your name today father in the mighty name of jesus father we thank you we give you praise we give you glory we give you honor we give you adoration blessed be your holy name O god and so our father we enter into your presence this morning in the name of god the father the son and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for that which you said to do in our midst today. Please be your holy name, Almighty Father. In Jesus' matchless name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's a good thing. Praise. It's the 
on this day. Hold up and worship you. Let it our hands up to the most high and worship him. He alone has brought us together once again. He alone has helped us this far. He alone has made everything work together for our good. Lord, we worship you. We we'll bless you, Lord King of Glory. You are
Hallelujah. Let somebody shout hallelujah. We are going to be interceding now. We are going to the intercessory prayers. Let's quickly open our Bible to the book of Proverbs. We are praying for our husband. The book of Proverbs, Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3, we are reading 5 and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all the ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. We are going to be praying for our husband, that the Lord should direct their path, that they should not lean on their own understanding. Let God direct the path of our husband. Let's begin to pray and begin to decree upon them that they will not lean on their own understanding so that they will not fail in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray for our husband that let them believe and lean on only God's understanding, not their own understanding in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, God Almighty, we pray, O Lord, for our husband, O Lord. Father, let them put their trust and their hope in you. Father, let them not lean on their own understanding. Let them believe and have your own understanding. Lean on you, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, guard the heart of our husband. Guard it, O Lord, according to your word, in the name of Jesus, so that they will not make mistake in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father, in Jesus' mighty name. We are going to be praying for our husband that we are not going to cry over our husband. The Lord should protect them. The Lord should guide their ways. We will not bury our husband. We will not mourn in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the Lord guide their step. Let the Lord protect them in the mighty name of Jesus. Our faithful Father, Lord God Almighty, we commit our husband unto your able hand, O oh Lord, for your guidance, O oh Lord, for your protection in the name of Jesus. As they go out, O oh Lord, Father, you go with them. When they come back, Father, you will come back with them. You will be with them all through the days of their life in the mighty name of Jesus. They will not fall into error. They will not fall into mistakes in the mighty name of Jesus. Their heart will be God. Their heart will be protected in the name of Jesus. You will shield them away from every ungodly cancer in the name of Jesus that can injure their family in the mighty name of Jesus. You will guide them only with righteous people. You will surround them by righteous people alone in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. We are going to be interceding for our children now. We are going to be reading Psalm 91. We are going to be reading Psalm 91 for our children. 1 to 4 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise pestilence. And 4 says, He shall cover thee with His feathers. And under his wing shall thou trust. His, tr his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. We are going to be interceding for our children right now. That the Lord should guide our children. The Lord should cover them with his feather and his wings. Our children will not fall into error. They will not fall into mistakes. In the name of Jesus. Our children's hearts will not be corrupted by evil children out there. Our children will not be initiated into any cult. We will not mourn over our children. Whether we are there or we are not there, these children, the Lord will protect them. The Lord will guide them. Let's begin to raise our voice for our children that the Lord will protect them wherever they may be, whether in the school, whether their place of work. The Lord will guide our children in the name of Jesus. Call your children by their name and begin to raise this prayer for them. I call my children forth. Joy, children, the wisdom, Emmanuel, Agona, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, that He will guide our children, He will shield them, they will not be corrupted. In the name of Jesus, their hearts will not be torn against us, their hearts will not be torn against God. In the mighty name of Jesus, wherever our children may be, the Lord will guide them, the Lord will protect them, they will not be killed, they will not be killed. In the name of Jesus, Father Lord, we raise the blood of Jesus for our children, wherever our children 
are, even their schools, we raise the blood of Jesus for our children. This evil virus uh, that is roaming about, we not locate our children. We not locate our children's schools. In the mighty name of Jesus, our children are covered by the blood of Jesus. Wherever they may be, their work, their school is covered by the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. That's people that is than the blood of Abel. In the name that is above every other name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We are going to be interceding for our singles. The singles in our midst and all over the world. All over. Let's begin to pray for our singles according to Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9. It says two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Let's begin to pray for our singles that the Lord should locate them. The Lord should locate them with the bone of their bone and the flesh of their flesh. Because two is better than one according to the Bible. Every veil that is covering our single, let the Lord remove it. Let the Lord burn into ashes in the mighty name of Jesus. So that they can locate their boys in the name of Jesus. Let's lift up our voice for our singles right now. And begin to decree upon their life that the Lord will help them. The Lord will give them the bone of their bone and the flesh of their flesh. In the name of Jesus. All those tears in the they are closed. The Lord will wipe it away in the mighty name of Jesus and they shall rejoice. We shall celebrate them in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We are praying for the new beginners with Joshua 1 verse 9 and it says have I have not I commanded thee be strong and be of a good courage be not afraid Neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, with soever thou goest. Let's begin to pray and commit the, the new beginners into the hand of God. That wherever they go, wherever they may be, the Lord will go with them. The Lord will be with them. The Lord will protect them. The Lord will guide them. The Lord will provide all that they need according to his riches in glory. In the name of Jesus, they will never know any lack. All those time of tears in their life is over. In the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord and our God, we pray for the new beginners, O oh Lord. Daddy, that you strengthen them. Daddy, you strengthen them more than ever before. In the mighty name of Jesus. Daddy, you will uphold them with your right hand, Lord. In the name of Jesus. They will not know lack. They will not know lack. In the name of Jesus. And Daddy, we also pray for them, O oh Lord. In the teeth of you, O oh Lord. Ah, they will not go back. They will continue to serve you. They will serve you more than ever before. In the mighty name of Jesus. Daddy, Lord, give them the strength. Give them the ability to serve you more. To serve you more. Father, do not allow them to look back in the mighty name of Jesus. Every of their need, oh Lord. Financially, emotionally, oh Lord, Father, you will strengthen them. Spiritually, Daddy, you will strengthen them. In the name of Jesus. We cover them by the blood of Jesus. Everything that surround them, their children, they are covered by the blood of Jesus. Their businesses, oh Lord, their work are covered by the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We are going to open our Bibles now to the book of Numbers. Let's open our Bible to the book of Numbers. Number six. Number six. We are reading from 24 to 26. We are praying for our set woman. The settlement of this ministry. Let's read that Bible together. We are reading from number 6, verse 24 to 26. We are using that scripture to pray for the set woman. It says, the Lord, let's go. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lifts up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. 
We are going to be praying for our settlement. That the Lord will give her peace. The Lord will give her family peace. In the mighty name of Jesus. Wherever she go, the Lord will go with her. The Lord will be with her. In this God-given assignment, the Lord will give her more strength. In the mighty name of Jesus. And we are going to be thanking God for sending the settled man to shepherd his people. In the name of Jesus. Let's begin to thank God for his love. The love he has put in the heart of the apostle. Ah, let's appreciate God. Even for the unique set of gifts and talents ah, that I reach her in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you concerning the set woman who has heard your voice ah, and come out, oh Lord, for this assignment. A lot of us have been blessed through the ministration. Daddy, we thank you for her life. Daddy, we pray, oh Lord, for the set woman that you will continue to uphold her. You will continue to strengthen her. She will never go weary in the name of Jesus. She will not be tired in this race, oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. And she will not miss her own heaven, oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we cover the apostle by the blood of Jesus. Her husband, her children, her family, her ministry is covered by the blood of Jesus. You will shield her in the name of Jesus. Thank you, faithful Father. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We are going to be praying for her. For more release from God. Unction to function. More declaration from above. In the mighty name of Jesus, let's begin to pray that the Lord will continue to show her great and mighty things, even the ones that she has not been shown to. Let the Lord manifest himself in her life and show her great and mighty things. In the mighty name of Jesus, whatever she decree shall come to pass, and whatever she cast out shall be casted out. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we so covered by the blood of Jesus. The ministry is covered by the blood of Jesus. Her husband, her children, her uh, entire things that is surrounded by her is covered by the blood of Jesus. Even her own businesses is covered by the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Our showers of grace building. Matthew 16, 18 says, the Lord, the Lord says, he will build his own church and the gate of hell will never prevail against it. It is God who owns this building. It is God who is building this building. We are not the one building it. God can only use us. But this building belongs to God. And he will build it to the end. The gate of hell will never prevail over it in the mighty name of Jesus. And in Philippians 4.19, the Bible says, uh, The Lord God Almighty will supply all our needs according to his riches in glory. The Bible does not tell me that the Lord will provide only one or two. He said all, all means that the Lord is going to perfect it to the fullest in the mighty name of Jesus. We are going to be calling forth now resources. Let's begin to call resources forth for these showers of building in the name of Jesus. Let comfort resources from the east, from the west, from the north, from the south, from every hook and corners. Let the Lord bring the people that he has ordained to come and be partaker of this building in the name of God and God will use me and you for this building in the name of Jesus. The Lord will provide more for us uh, and we shall be partaker of this blessing because it's a blessing to build the house of the Lord. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. We are going to be praying for the ministry and Busola Jagged International Ministry. 1 Corinthians 3, 6. Apostle Paul planted Apollo's waters. But God did what? Brought the increase. We are going to be interceding for our ministry. That the Lord should bring increase. The Lord should bring increase. We should not decrease. Because of what has happened, a lot of people, when you hear from them, some of them will say, ah, I will only connect online. It is a lie from the devil. We are going to be praying first for our brethren that the Lord should change the heart of those that said they will not come out because of fear that they only want to be worshipping. They only want to be worshipping it online. Let the Lord touch their hearts and bring them back in the mighty name of Jesus. We have stayed long in their house and that is not God's purpose for us. We are going to be calling them forth as many 
are that have been discouraged, let's begin to pray that the Lord should encourage them. The Lord should bring them back so that the fellowship can be filled again. We are talking of increase. We ourselves have to be on ground. We have to fill the place so we can go out to work and bring more people into the kingdom of God. Let's begin to call forth. Let's begin to call our people forth. Wherever everyone is that is supposed to, to join us in this fellowship, let's call them forth. Let God himself minister into their heart and minister unto them and bring them and bring them. Let everywhere be filled in the name of Jesus. Daddy, we call forth every of our brethren, oh Lord. Every one of them that have been discouraged because of this pandemic. My God and my Father. Daddy, bring them back, oh Lord. Bring them back, oh Lord. Remove every fear from the life of everyone. Remove every fear from the heart of everyone. In the mighty name of Jesus. Daddy, we pray, oh Lord, for increase. We pray for increase. Numerically, oh Lord, increase us. In the name of Jesus. Spiritually, daddy, increase us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, faithful father. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. We are going to be praying lastly for Nigeria. According to Psalm 17, verse 6, he says, I call on you, my God, for you will answer me. Turn your ear to me and hear my prayer. The Lord will hear our prayer this morning as we intercede for Nigeria that this pandemic, the Lord should remove it completely from this nation and from all over the nations of the world. In the mighty name of Jesus, let the Lord remove this sickness and this evil virus out of this country in the mighty name of Jesus. And we are going to be saying, Lord, Father, touch the heart of our leaders, every evil leaders. Father, I remove them from this country in the mighty name of Jesus. Let them be surrounded only by righteous people. The people that will not corrupt their heart against their countries in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, faithful Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are we not happy that we are in presence of God today? It has been a while, but our God is faithful. You are all welcome to Daughters of Destiny Interdenominational Fellowship today. And for our online viewers, please like and share this broadcast with friends and family. When the righteous rejoice, it is for a greater glory. So shall it be for us this month, September, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Be blessed as you listen to the following announcements. Our Monday Fellowship Resumption at Destiny International Center, DIC, resumes today. I thought someone would say, Hallelujah. Let's clap unto Jesus. Let's keep clapping unto praise God for his divine protection. Let we thank God for his divine preserve, for preserving each and every one of us. We do not lose anybody. We do not cry over anybody. We do not cry over any of our children. Even our children have gone back to school. In these six months that we have been at, we have been at home, we have not been going about it because it has only been God. It's a great thing to give God praise. Our God is faithful and he will continue to preserve each and every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. You can still join our live streaming online. You will certainly be, have a blessed and wonderful time. It is important to register your physical attendance by sending your full name, age, contact number, and address to the office at plus two three four eight zero three three zero four eight three one one. You are advised to strictly observe all COVID-19 protocols by wearing your face mask. Those wearing a face shield must wear a face mask underneath. Maintain a good hygiene practice by washing your hands regularly or use an alcohol-based sanitizer. Observe our social distancing rule. No face marks, no entry. Praise the Lord. 
ideas to execution, Zoom master class with Dr. Shogo, a life coach and speaker, and Busola Jegede, a transformation and empowerment coach, will be on audio for sale. If you have missed this insightful section, you can order for the MP3 audio version. Contact the office on how to order. Also, the Jubilee Plus Rejuvenate Visual Conference CDs and the MP3 downloadable, downloadable versions are available for purchase for those who were unable to attend this conference during the lockdown. Please contact the office to pick up a copy. A program for all women, especially the 40 plus ladies, themed effectively managing your emotions. We hold on Saturday, 3rd October, that this Saturday, 3rd October, 2020, time is 6 p.m. Venue, the 40 plus woman Facebook page. Guest speaker and specialist is Dr. Lilia, Lilia St. Matthew Daniels. Be sure to join in. Contact the office if you would like to be a covenant partner with our ongoing building project, be part of what God is doing here. Please, each and every one of us need to key into this vision and be part of what God is doing in our midst and we will not, uh, we will not go unrewarded in Jesus' name. Amen. Our weekly programs. Our firebrand hosts today, sorry, our firebrand hosts tomorrow, Tuesday at 9 a.m. on 9 a.m. on our online platforms. Healing marriages will be online on Wednesday at 9 a.m. Join the transformation series online every Thursday at 9 a.m. Fire Hour will be a live, will be live on Facebook from Mondays to Fridays at 5 p.m. daily and on Saturday 6 a.m. prompt. Do join us on Facebook with your prayer request. Share links with, fam with your families and friends to key into this powerful intercessory series. Details on how to give your special offering and pledge and tithe are on the screen. And will be posted on our WhatsApp platforms. You can order for an inspirational and prayer book by Busola Jegede at conga.com or send a WhatsApp message for the e-copy version. Keep sending in those amazing testimonies. Testimony, testimonies will be shared on Thursday on our various social media platforms. As we celebrate God with you, the word of God says, and we overcome by the blood of the lamb and by our testimonies. So keep sharing those amazing things that God has done for you. Do share your testimony with us via WhatsApp on Plot two three four eight zero three three zero four eight three one one, or send us an email to dodaughters at yahoo.com. Be sure to tune in to all our live broadcasts on Facebook at Daughters of Destiny Interdenominational Fellowship, on Instagram at We Are DOD, and on our YouTube at Daughters of Destiny. God bless you. Hallelujah. We have the victory in Jesus. We are overcomers and that's why we are here. We are here this morning to celebrate our victory because our service in the kingdom will not be at home. It will be in the house of the Lord. Be blessed as you listen in the name of Jesus.
rise up on your feet and begin to thank God for the victory in your life. Indeed, victory even over coronavirus. You are standing and you are alive and we give God praise this morning wherever you are. Yes, indeed, victory has come in all the earth. Can we bless the name of the Lord? There was so much fear. There was so much anxiety. But thank God we are here today. Lord, we thank you. Victory has come in all the earth. Lord, we bless your name. Evil prophecies did not come to pass. We did not die on the road. Dead men and women were not picked up from Africa. Because who is it that shared the thing? Who is the expert? Who gave birth to the expert? The one that made the expert did not allow the evil prediction. by the hand of the Lord. Father, we bless your name. I want you to thank God. Thank God for your life, for your family. No matter what you are still believing God for, can you give him thanks this morning, wherever you are? It is a good thing to thank the Lord, to sing his praises in the morning, to bless his name. He alone is worthy to receive all the glory. He's too mighty. He's too big. Nobody can beef God. <laughs> Nobody can be, can, can fight him. Oh Lord, we worship you. Oh King of Kings, call him his covenant names wherever you are this morning. Yes, call him his covenant names. Lord, we bless your name. Agidiba. We worship you, King of Glory. Jehovah.
together. We've been through a lot. Families, individuals, we've been through a lot. But it is because God is taking us somewhere. And so I want you to lift up your two hands and say, Father, fill me with new wine this morning. Where there is new wine, there is new fire. There is new
There is a spirit that comes upon a person that you think it is finished when God has just started. It is from the pit of hell. The spirit of depression makes you feel worthless. It makes you feel tired. It makes you feel that you are out of sync. It makes you feel you do not fit in. Hey, that's a lie of the devil. This morning I'm here to prophesy. Into your life, nothing will hold you down. Something new is still coming out of your life. Because the word of God says, Behold, I do a new thing. I do a new thing. Shall it not spring forth? Isaiah 43, 18 to 19. I'm decreeing and Declare it to your life and mine, no matter our age. That new thing will spring forth. I'm speaking to somebody. I said that new thing will come alive. That new vision will come to life. That new thing. You are single. That new state of your life will come to pass. You are believing God for a new thing. Your womb will bear fruit. Hey, your hands will bear fruit. In the name of Jesus, that new thing will come to pass new things thank the lord right now for new things oh new wine where the enemy says it is finished that's where god starts hey, hey, hey. you are looking at yourself please never ever consider any age or think you are too old for anything no matter your age something new can still come out no matter how young you are, something great can still come out. Hey, Caleb said, give me this mountain. I may be 80 years old, but I still have the strength of a 40-year-old. Who is it here today? You know that you carry dynamite inside. I may be looking like this, but what I have on my inside is greater than what you can see. Somebody give him a shout. Father Lord, say in the name of Jesus, let the greatness inside inside manifest talk to the Lord right now declare it walk around in the house of the Lord and say the new thing in my inside you are coming out on the outside hey new visions new ideas new creativity was hidden in Egypt but when he got to the Jordan there was an announcement the one that was taken to Egypt because it was the time that he was still young there is a time of growth when you are still small and you need to be protected but one day he went to the Jordan people did not know who came to the Jordan heaven opened somebody say my heaven opened a voice spoke <laughs> Even though the people around did not know, but heaven had to tell them, somebody lift up your voice. Say, heaven announce me. Heaven announce my work. Heaven announce, heaven announce this nation. Heaven announce this ministry. The Bible says, a voice came from heaven. And said, this is my beloved son. I'm just ministering freely. This is my beloved son. Hear him. Voice gave an instruction. A voice came from heaven. He said, This is my beloved son. Pastor Vivian, look for that scripture. You are going to read it again. What happened to Jesus when he got to the Jordan? Jesus came 
with full obedience. Jesus came fulfilling righteousness. I'm speaking to somebody. You have been in the waiting room in obedience. You have been doing all you need to do. Jesus was age 30 before announcement came. Some things don't come quick. Some things don't come early, but when they come, they come loud. Is somebody catching it? This morning, I'm just going to prophesy all through. Look for that scripture. Please give her a microphone. You are going to read it. And the Lord says, when he came to the Jordan, you know, because he was so humble. Jesus had always been humble. They didn't even know him. Even when he was to be betrayed, somebody had to kiss him to show him. Somebody you've been walking in humility. And you know, sometimes humility has, I will not say it is a downside. But humility has this thing. When you're a very humble person, people can overlook you. Sometimes people can rubbish you. They will say, is it you? Is it you? Are you the one? Are you sure you are the one? <laughs> I remember I went for a meeting a long time ago. And I met some women of God. And one of them said, oh, you, you. I said, I'm waiting for my husband to come and pick me. Because I live in Aja. The meeting was in Ikeja. He said, you live in Aja? I heard there's a big ministry in Aja. Uh, somebody is telling me about a woman of God that uh, won daughters. I said, is me? He said, you? Are you sure? <laughs> Because she looked at me because I was simple. Somebody, every eye that has downplayed you. It is not as if I'm begging to be recognized. But I'm just saying, sometimes you are walking in humility. If I had gone to that meeting with my six protocol. Is it I don't have protocol? I just need to say, please meet me. She will not talk like that. She said, is it you? Up till today, she's still very sorry for that thing she did. Because she said, her friend told her, it is you. I said, it is Jesus. Somebody, they will see the Jesus in you. Sometimes, because you are humble, you may be cheated. Sometimes, because you are single, you are a woman walking alone, and there is no man with you. Maybe you are not married. Maybe you are widowed. People don't respect people sometimes. There are people in this nation, they will never respect you if they don't see a man beside you. Are you with me? Once I wanted to buy something. When I got there, the man said, go and bring your husband. Before I can sell this property to you. Why? Because he wanted to sell it to... So he, but is that necessary? It's not necessary. Because of your gender, people can overlook you and they can run you down. But today, heaven will bring a divine announcement. I say heaven will bring a divine announcement. In the name of Jesus. Can you read that scripture? Can you read that scripture? Pay attention yes. to that scripture. Matthew 3, 17. Matthew 3, 17. And a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hey! Then what happened? Next, read it. Read it. What happened after that? Then Jesus was led up into the wilderness by the spirit to be tempted by the devil. Hallelujah. 16. Read it from 16. Matthew 3, 16 and to 17. And when Jesus was baptized, mm -hmm. he came up immediately out of the water. And suddenly the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. I want you to say this prayer following the sequence. Jesus, when he was to be baptized... The king of kings and the lord of lords went in obedience to somebody to be baptized. What is that? Humility. Humility. He didn't say, who are you to baptize me? Don't you know? I want you to say, Father, give me a humble heart. Make that your prayer. Give me, anywhere I get to, give me a humble heart. Even when people maltreat you, they will feel sorry for it. If, if you act in humility and they maltreat you, eventually when they realize they will feel sorry for it say lord give me a humble heart somebody in that marriage you need a humble heart yes you may be going through a lot of things humility humility oh verse 13 says then jesus 
Then coming Jesus from Galilee to Jordan to John to be baptized. Jesus, he made the journey of humility. He went from Galilee to the Jordan. He went out. There are some of you, God is telling you to do some things. You are thinking, how will I go there? They will talk about me. How will I? Be? But that is your key. Say, Father, give me the grace to do anything I need to do in humility. I arrest every spirit of pride in me. Arrest it. Yes, that is blocking your way. Get rid of it. In Jesus' mighty name. Look at that scripture. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight away out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. Lift up your voice and point to your heaven. For the remainder of this year and into the new year, my heaven opened by fire. La rica sanda licata. My heaven opened. My heaven opened. My heaven opened. Shalabra que sende licata. My heaven opened. In the name of Jesus, speak to your heaven to open. Speak to the heaven of your husband and your children. When your heaven is open, there are releases from the heaven. <laughs> Favor. Oh, Lekisata, my heaven, open, open. When the heaven is closed, there is a lot of struggle. I will not struggle from now to the end of the year. In the name of Jesus, somebody pray. Look at that. What happened? It now says, and he saw the Spirit of God. Open my spiritual eyes, oh God. I will begin to see what people cannot see. Hey, opportunities that people cannot see. God will open my eyes to danger so that I will not fall inside. In the name of Jesus, somebody prophesy to yourself. Pray, pray, pray. He saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. Say, Spirit of God, fall on me. Uh, fall on me. Uh, fall on my life. Uh, fall on my family. Fall on my work. Uh, fall on this ministry afresh. In the name of Jesus. Rasha gadagali bregezegete. Mandali gali gasata. Like a dove and lighting upon him. Spirit of God, light upon me. Hey, hey. Roboko say manifest in my life. Spirit of the living God. Somebody pray. Jadi Gale in this month of greater glory. Roshinda Ligata. Verse 14, verse 17. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Another gospel says, Hear him. Number one, God was saying his mind. And another one, if you read, I don't know whether I was in John. He said, this is my beloved son. Hear him. Lift up your voice and say, Father, divinely announce me. Somebody divinely announce me. <laughs> divinely announce me. Divinely announce me. In the name of Jesus. Somebody, your announcement will, it will not be from your mouth. But your family members, they will hear from outsiders. You know, a prophet is never recognized in his own country. From outsiders, they will bring your testimony to your very family. <laughs> and they will be happy to claim you. And say, eh, hey, 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 she's my sister. Eh, hey, she's my daughter. There is a 21-year-old girl who did photography. The parents sent her to school. She's in one of the universities in Nigeria, but she just loved taking photographs. And she started using her phone. From there, she became popular. I don't want to mention name. She's on Twitter. And then she shot a, a photograph of a house, the, the most expensive house in Abuja. And when she posted that, that picture, I think they said she got over 100,000 likes or followers. And then somebody now went to her mother and said, is this your daughter? You know the way mothers are always saying, face your book, read your accountancy, read this photograph you are taking. He said, the mother now said, hey, it's my daughter. My daughter has blown. Somebody cry. Say, my announcement will reach people who, who, have, who, who, who have been looking down on me. Oh Lord, divine announcement. Look at that young girl. <laughs> her mother started claiming her. She started saying, she's my daughter. She's my daughter. But the mother was saying before, be careful with this photography. Because sometimes she will go and take photographs. She will not tell her parents. Because that's her gift. Lift up your voice. Father Lord, loud announcement. Somebody I'm prophesying to that world, to that ministry. I'm prophesying to that business. And prophesying to our children, Father Lord, announce them divinely. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Say, Father Lord, let my life be pleasing unto you. When your life is pleasing unto God, it doesn't matter who is not pleased with you. Oh, when God is delighted in you, humility is the key. Humility is the key. Father Lord, thank you.
thank you. Can you bless the Lord for his word this morning? Can you thank him for every prophetic word? Oh, Father, we give you thanks. Thank you so much, choir. God bless you. Hallelujah. Wow. What a good God. I welcome you all one more time to fellowship. And I can gladly welcome those. There is somebody watching like that. And watching online. You're supposed to be here. It is very spacious. Our hall is ventilated. In fact, if you want to stay in the garden, we have a lot of land. If you don't want to co come close, you can take a picture. Assure your fine boy that nothing will be wrong with you. Assure your husband. We thank God for his grace upon us. And we are happy to be back. Can you just say, I'm happy to be back? <laughs> Yes, there is a joy in the house of the Lord. And so I welcome you all back to fellowship and we look forward to seeing more people next week. This morning is going to be short and sharp because um, we, we, we are not supposed to stay for too long. But you see, there's really nothing wrong, okay? There's nothing wrong. People stay long in a computer village. Bumper to bumper. Have you not been there? People stay long in supermarkets, bumper to bumper. It is church. Because the enemy doesn't want us to gather. The enemy is afraid of what we can do. <laughs> and the church of God is marching on. And the gates of hell will not prevail. Two important scriptures. You are going to help me, Bible reader. The first scripture, Luke chapter number 16. Luke chapter number 16 from verse 19. I want you to read it. And then... We will go to Acts chapter number 3. Can you read that Luke chapter number 16 verse 19? And I will, I will preach and we will pray. I will preach and we will pray. Luke 16 verse number 19. Please read it on. Luke 16, 19. There was a rich man who was clothed with, in purple and fine linen and fed sumptuously every day. There was also a beggar named Lazarus covered with sores who had been placed at his gate, desiring to be fed the crumbs falling from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. It came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's presence. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham from a distance and Lazarus in his presence. So he cried out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in that you in your lifetime received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted and you are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf, so that those who would pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. Then he said, Then I pray you, Father, to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers to testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. Thank you very much. Father, bless your word. Reveal deep insights. Give us meat today to take away that would profit each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. The title of my short message today, I pray it is very short. There is light at the end of the tunnel. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Even what we have gone through, there was a time we didn't know when or how we would open. But here we are today. Somebody you are going through something is like you are in a tunnel. But I'm here to declare to you that there is light at the end of the tunnel. 
The first thing I want to I want you to pay attention to is this Luke chapter number 16 from verse 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and linen and feared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which laid at his gate full of sores. So I want to paint a picture in that city. We don't know the name of the city, but we can imagine. Before this story could have been written, it must have been something that is well known in that vicinity that they're always partying in a particular house. I'm sure if you had gone to the street of that man, his house was very visible. I like to paint a picture when I'm meditating on scriptures. I want to believe immediately you get to that area. If you had asked, I'm going to the house of Mr. Rich. Everybody knew the man. Not only did they know him, he had a partying spirit. The Bible tells us that they were always eating there. Yet, at his gate, laid a man. And I was just wondering, how come Lazarus chose to lay at this gate? Because he thought, if it is happening inside the house, something should drop. As a matter of fact, the Bible is telling us that Verse 21, he desired to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. But what happened? Dogs were coming to lick him. Many times, many of us have looked at the scripture and we've blamed the rich man. And of course, he was insensitive. But then the Bible took me to the book of Acts chapter number 3. Somebody go with me to the book of Acts chapter number 3. And you are going to pray from verse number 1. It says, now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man... A certain man again who had a problem again. A certain man, lame from his mother's womb, carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple. Do you see a similarity? Which is called beautiful to ask of arms of them that entered into the temple. Who seen Peter? And John, about to go into the temple, he asked for arms. What happened? Peter fastened his eyes upon him. He said, silver and gold, I have none. And we know what happened. Prayer point number one. My life will not remain at a wrong gate. Somebody can be at the wrong gate and die at the wrong gate. Lazarus was carried to the wrong gate. The gate looked promising, but he didn't deliver. Somebody, you will rise up. I will not stay at the wrong location. In the name of Jesus, my husband and my children will not stay at the wrong location. A place may look promising, but it will not deliver. It was another man that went to another gate. But the gate beautiful, the gate with the Lord, the gate with Jesus, it delivered to him. What the gate of the rich man who was partying every day. Yes, somebody lift up your voice. Hey, my destiny will not remain at the the wrong gate. My business will not remain at the wrong location. In the name of Jesus, somebody pray. Somebody pray. If I am at the wrong gate, Father, relocate me. Give me revelation. I'm not going to die at the wrong gate of life. My business will not die at the wrong gate of life. My ministry will not die at the wrong gate of life. My children will not die at the wrong gate. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Lazarus laid at the gate. The, the man who was lame laid at the gate. Two different gates. Two different results. What was it? The beautiful gate was the gate of salvation. The beautiful gate carried the promise of God. Hey, some believe they depend on the arm of the flesh. There are people that go to people because they know they have money they think they can save them wrong gate you think let me align with this person because she has money wrong gate align with God stay at the gate of Jesus eventually <laughs> they put the man same exact thing they had to carry both of them to the gates 
but one got salvation and one died. As a matter of fact, before he died, he had shame. Dogs licked him. Somebody, are dogs licking you now? Say, Father, open my eyes. Some of us, what we are doing is not what we're supposed to be doing. But some things, ah, some things limit us. He had to be carried. Maybe the place was too far. I don't know. But say, Father Lord, let heaven relocate me. If I'm at the wrong place, if I'm at the wrong business, if I'm in the wrong thing, in the name of Jesus, Lord, take me to the right gate in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. There was a certain rich man clothed in purple, in linen. It looked like it, but it was not it. It looked like they would give him food, but they didn't give him. Today I prophesy into somebody's life. That long-standing thing that you have been believing God should come through. Yet it's not coming through. May God relocate you to your place of lifting. In the name of Jesus. So back to Luke chapter number 16, verse 19. He now says, he was desiring to be fed, nothing happened. And then it came to pass, the beggar died. Ah, and was carried by the angels. Can you see the light at the end of his tunnel? That's a good thing that at least he made heaven. But somebody, can you pray? My greatness will start from this earth. Eh, yes. I will be great on earth and in heaven. It's not only to suffer. Have you seen women who suffer in marriages? The men will pin them down. Give them the rule of the old Leviticus. Will not allow them any privileges. The minute they die. The small girl they will marry. They will use the money to buy a car for her. Meanwhile the woman was jumping from Okada. Everything suffering. Say I will not suffer on this earth. Uh, they say a teacher's reward is in heaven. How many teachers are ready to wait for that? Eh? You want to wait till you get to heaven before you get your reward. Let the reward start. Is it in the Bible? Eh? It's not in the Bible. There are many evil things that people say. A teacher's reward is in heaven. Where is it written? Every teacher say, I reject it, I will get my reward. <laughs> it wasn't until Lazarus got to heaven before he started enjoying we thank God he still, he still made it. We thank God, but it would have been better. And so what happened? And then the rich man also. This thing is very, very instructive. Look at that. He says, Lazarus was carried by angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Those are two different things. Lazarus was carried by angels. Straight to Abraham's bosom. The rich man died and was buried. And in hell. Meaning, he went to hell. Lift up your voice. I will make it to heaven. Ah, Rakashandalika. Father Lord, after staying on this earth, I will make it to heaven. Whatever will not allow me to make it. Father Lord, open my eyes. I bring repentance. In Jesus' name. Heaven is real. Hell is real. Because this is written in red. This is Jesus talking. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeing Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus. I'm shocked that he knows him. Not only did he know him, he knew his name. Oh, so you knew him, you couldn't even help him. Please, people of God, let us be sensitive to people around us. You know, there are some people that may be in your area, you would think they don't know you. They know you. They know you. They may just be sitting by your street and you are driving your car every day. You think they don't know you. They know you very well. They know the number of children you have. They know your children's school. Information is very, very, <laughs> it's very, very easy to give. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Christian, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So he said, Send him to dip his hand 
and put a little water. Number one, can a little water quench his thirst? It's going to be too late for anybody that gets to hell. There will be too little, too late. So this is the time for you and I to watch our ways. This is the time for you and I to check our lives. Nobody is perfect, but we are all walking towards perfection. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip up of his finger in water and cool my tongue. 25, Abraham said, son, remember that in your lifetime you received many good things. Likewise, Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted and you are tormented. Did that have to happen? No. The fact that you are rich does not mean it is a sin. What is a sin is when we are insensitive. So, you can be rich, but be rich in giving. As you, God has given you things, you look in your wardrobe, there are clothes you have not worn. Two rooms, you are using the wardrobe of two rooms for only your life's clothes. One day, just look, anything you have not worn in six months, remove it. Remove it and give it to people who need it. Your children are now in the university. You still have their, the, the shoes they wore. You, you are very good in organizing. You put it in a box. You labeled it. Stephen at three. Bosse at two. You arranged the thing very well. Then you look over. I remember how, when I bought this thing. I bought it in, uh, I bought it in Debingham. The children have gone. Give it to somebody else. Let's be sensitive. There are things that when you give it to somebody else, it will be their Christmas clothes. And I'm doing a collection. Please bring all your old clothes, your shoes, your bags. We are going to bless some people. That will be their Christmas clothes. They don't have what to wear. You don't know where to see them. We know where to see them. We know the communities. We went to a particular community the other day. We were just driving around. When we got to the community, just by Ikota Bridge, you will be shocked how many people are there. We package food. Some of you have seen it on social media. We have not yet posted it. We are still going to do it. We package food. When was it? Almost two weeks ago. Food, clothing, everything. We just drove just by that bridge before you get to the Eleganza Bridge. We just made a right turn. Holy Spirit lead us. We were shocked. And then we saw a woman who wanted to give us something. She said, come and meet the ballet. She took us to the ballet. We greeted the ballet. Gave the ballet some things. We said, call people out. I'm telling you impromptu. Over 100 people, they were collecting food. They just started coming. And in fact, when the food finished, I told my team, everybody disappeared because the food has finished. There are people who are in need, but insensitivity will block your eyes and my eyes. Meaning if we are not intentional about doing some things, it is a sin before God. So the rich man, I want to believe, maybe he was too busy. He didn't notice the man. But now when he got to hell, he knew his name. May your eyes and my eyes be open. So if you have clothes for children, bags you are not using, we will arrange it. Somebody else will wear it to church and will be happy. There are people who don't even have food to eat, not to talk of clothes to wear. But God has blessed some of us. We Every Christmas, we are always buying new, new things. You know, some of us, uh, I've not bought anything this Christmas. I'm not happy. Some don't even have anything. Sensitivity. The rich man was not sensitive. Now let's move on. Verse 27. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father. After he wanted Lazarus to come and give him water. That one did not work. Look at this rich man. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou will send him. To where? Everybody read it. To my father's house. For I have how many brethren? That he might do what? Lest they also come into... Somebody say, hashtag evangelism too late. Too late. So you knew that your brothers need to hear about God. When you were on earth and you were rich, may we not do some necessary things at the wrong time. Sometimes some things come, but they are too late. 
it was too late. He knew the right thing to do, but it was too late. And so what happened? Abraham said, they have Moses. They have the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, nay, Father Abraham. Thank you. He said, verse 28, verse 30, nay, Father Abraham. But if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. Can anybody analyze the character of this rich man? What can you say about this rich man? What insight do you have? He was a very analytical person. Can you see? He kept twisting Father Abraham. Give, tell him to give me water. Father Abraham said it's not possible. There's a white gulf. Okay. Upon the fire that was burning him, his head was still working. Send him to my brothers. Brethren, no matter the intellect that anybody has, no matter the skills, no matter how well gifted you are, without Jesus, the person can end up in hell. He was a very, very intelligent man. Intelligent people sometimes don't want to hear about God. Can you see? The rich man was very analytical. He knew how to take advantage of opportunity. He knew, oh, this man, if he cannot give me water, he can minister to my brethren. I am here to decree and declare to everyone, no certificate will save anybody from hell. It's only when you give your life to Jesus. And you know, some people, when they have money, they don't want to hear about Jesus. When they have money and you, you are talking about church, you are talking about prayer, they look down at you. But at the last, that is what will matter. No man's intellect will matter. No man's qualification will matter. If you don't have Jesus, that's the end. Today, I'm using this opportunity to reach out to as many there. You yet don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, but your bank account is busting loose. That cannot take you to heaven. Your network is busting loose. That cannot take you to heaven. In fact, you are very popular. People know you. That cannot take you to heaven. I've seen people who have died. They are rich people. In fact, there's a particular one trending now. Very, very influential. But the testimony after the death is rubbish. It's rubbish. When a man dies and all the evil is now coming out. It's rubbish. But you see, the Bible says, Precious in the eyes of the Lord are the death of his saints. There are Christians who die that their testimony in fact, when they are burying them, people will be giving their lives. When they, when they are doing the service of songs, lives will be renewed. Because those people lived a godly life. They may not have so much money, but the testimony following them, people will be blessed that, oh, this man might have died, but this man, he did not die on the bed of adultery. This man did not die, and some children are appearing looking like him from another woman. Problem is now starting after the man has died. Some people will die. The problem they will live, it will be longer than the years they, li they lived on earth. So, whoever is out there now, this is a time for you and I to check our salvation. Can we all rise up wherever we are and begin to say, Father, whatever is going to make me end up in hell or torment, Lord, open my eyes. If you have not given your life to Jesus, your education, the education of the rich man, his connection could not save him. His reasoning, he was a sharp man. Yeah, he was very sharp. He couldn't save him. And so if you're watching this broadcast, you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I want you to give your life to Jesus. Because there is heaven and there is hell. Especially because we have passed through. We have seen a lot of things during this season. Young people have died. Old people have died. People who were sick have died. People who were not sick have died. But you and I, we still have another opportunity. Can you say, Father, search me this morning. Whatever is going to debar me from making heaven, take it away in the name of Jesus. If you are out there, you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to give your life to Jesus right now. Remember those two men, they laid at the gate. <laughs> they laid at the gate, coming back to where we started. One was at a gate that he thought would bring deliverance. 
are you there? You are the gate of connection. You are at the gate of socialization. You are the chairman of the club. You are there. You are here. You are the one who knows everybody, but you don't know Jesus. You are laying at the wrong gate. The gate looks likely, but it's not going to lead to salvation. But the man that went to the beautiful gate, he laid there and he got healed. I want you to put your hand on your chest as many who are there to receive Jesus right now. You want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I want you to step forward if you're in this congregation. If you're watching online, you will say after me. If you're in this congregation, you've never given your life to Jesus. I want you to step forward quickly, quickly, quickly. The Lord is waiting for you. Step forward, step forward. If you don't know Jesus, if you have never given your life to Jesus, this is another opportunity for you. Step forward as we take this prayer. And if you are online, put your hand on your chest. Say, Heavenly Father, say it after me. I thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for me. Today, I invite Jesus into my heart to be my Savior and my Lord. I confess that I'm born again. Wash me from my sins, oh God. Let your name be glorified in Jesus' name. For everyone who has given your life to Christ, say, Father, I rededicate my life today. If you are in this congregation, you want to rededicate your life, I want you to step forward. This pandemic has battered a lot of our faith. Step forward. You, yes, you are born again, but you know you are backslidden. You have, you, you yourself, you know, if Jesus should come now, you probably will not go. I want you to step forward and say, Father, I want to rededicate my life. I want to rededicate my life. Everybody pray. Say, Lord, search me, oh God. Wash me, oh God. Cleanse me from every unrighteousness. In the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, help me that I will not be a castaway. Hey. Help me that I will not be a castaway. Help me that when the trumpet will sound, I will not miss it. Somebody pray. Help me, oh God, that when the trumpet will sound, I will not be a castaway. Oh, mashandali broko shakata. What is it in my life that is holding me down? I surrender. Somebody surrender right now. I surrender. If you're in this congregation, there is an issue in your life. It's difficult for you. You have prayed to forgive, but it's just difficult for you. You need the Holy Spirit. I want you to step forward. If there's an issue in your life, yes, you want to be right with God, but there's this issue. It may be in your marriage. I want you to step forward. Step forward. Come and surrender to the Lord. You know, there's, there's just something in your life that is disturbing you. You need the help of God. I want you to step forward. Step forward. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to take that altar call again. Because I sense in my spirit, the Lord wants to heal some people. During, especially during the last six months, a lot of things have happened. And many of us have been struggling in our capacity. Many years ago, when I was living in the city of Worry, I had a business. And something happened between myself and another woman in the complex. And she did something very painful to me. It was very painful. And she's a Christian. We both attended different parishes of Redeem. It was so painful. They said, a minister came to me, but you are a minister's wife. Talking to me. Forgive. I said I've forgiven her. But every time I went back to the shop, she would do something else. And it would bring back the old pain. So one day, I knelt down and I prayed. I said, Jesus, if you come now, the truth is that I really hate this woman. I, I mean, I will not lie. What she has done made me lose money, made me do... I really, really hate her. Holy Spirit, you just have to help me. Because on my own, I've tried to forgive her. But she will still come and do something else. And I, I just prayed from my heart. Brethren, do you know what happened? Less than three months later, my husband came back home one day and told me, Usala, I've got a job where I'm leaving worry. We are going to Lagos. Ah, it was as if this woman has won. You know business war. How many people know business war? 
So I will not be the one that will leave. I'm not going to leave. I did not know God was delivering me. And so I left. And when I left, it was like she won. But God delivered me. Somebody, you have been struggling. You need the Holy Spirit to help you. Something has happened. It's, you you can say you're forgiven, but something you are you are human. <laughs> Am I speaking Greek? You are human. There is a way that if somebody touches your wound that is already healing, it will open up again. But the Holy Spirit is ready to help you wherever you are. I want you to step forward. I came to Lagos in the year 2001. And in the year 2004, I started getting a vision. My daughters are not praying. 2004 to 2020, how many years? 16 years. This is me now. What is that one shop in Worry? On Airport Road to what God is doing now. Somebody, God wants to release you from that chain. That unforgiveness is going to keep you down. I repeat again. <laughs> Some things have happened on your own. You have tried. But it takes the Holy Spirit. Step forward and give space. The Lord wants to heal you. This is why we come to fellowship. We thank God for online. But there are some things that in the house of the Lord. Spread out.
Let the balm of Gilead heal you in the name of Jesus. Let your heart be healed. We have a balm in Gilead. Receive your healing, emotional healing, spiritual healing in the name of Jesus. And I decree a new wine come out from you. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. It is done. It is done. Go back. It is done. And for as many online, it is done. Let's give Jesus praise this morning. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you today. We give you all the glory. Thank you for bringing us back to your house where we are always healed. And we receive strength to go on. To you, O oh Lord, be all glory. To you, O oh Lord, be all adoration. In Jesus' matchless name. Let's give Jesus praise as we bring out our offering. Let's bring out our offering. First, I want to pray for covenant partners. All our covenant partners, the Lord bless you abundantly in Jesus' name. If you're a covenant partner and you have your covenant seed, I want you to step forward. If you're giving your tithe, step forward. And uh, we are going to give our offering in an orderly manner. Ushers, you're going to put it there so that people will drop their offering. We're going to put the baskets by the aisle. Put the two big uh, put the baskets by the aisle so that people will just walk and give their offering. And we are giving it with a lot of thanksgiving. Yes, with a lot of thanksgiving and dancing. So, let's put the baskets. Yes. Ushers, please arrange us. Is there any covenant partner in the house? I want you to step forward. Let me pray for you. You are the covenant keeping God. I thank you for all our covenant partners and all those everyone giving to the building father lord we thank you for your hand upon our lives you are the covenant keeping god meet everyone at the point of need let your name be glorified in jesus name amen please drop your covenant offering there let's rise up on our feet why are we want to really rejoice and thank the lord hallelujah please arrange us as we come out <laughs> Ekele dirigi imelao chineke nemba mama dirigi imelao chineke nemba ekele dirigi Hallelujah! Let us dance for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords.
Chapter 2 